Have you ever seen horoscopes where you see some placement? For example, sun is there in the 10th house. Hmm. So that should make the person very career focused and should give a lot of name and fame to the person, right? Or maybe there's any planet like Mars and Sun, Mars is Digbal in the 10th house, or there is Jupiter, or there is Saturn, or any planet, you know, just, or maybe there are multiple planets. And then you're wondering, but it does not seem like, you know, this person has um, so much name fame, you know, this person has a very average life, you know, or maybe, um, or maybe it's not good in the D9, D10, <laughs> and you're confused what's going on. So that's exactly what we will tackle today. Whenever you see a particular placement in a chart, why do you not see the results as per that placement's prom uh, promise, as per the promise of that house? Because there is a missing link which everybody misses. And what is that? Guess what? Write it down in the comments. You might have already seen in the title and in the thumbnail. Yes. Welcome to Nakshatra 101. <laughs> Nakshatras are very important. But before that, if you like this video at the end then don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't and for consultations regarding your career marriage health you can opt through my website and god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him <laughs> now what are nakshatras nakshatras in short you could say you know they are like you zoom into a zodiac sign right so they are like you find the nakshatras there. I won't go into detail. You know, there are many videos in my channel or YouTube. You can find them. So now, the nakshatras have lords. What are lords? You know, like a planet is lording a particular sign or a particular house. So, for example, you are Capricorn ascendant. So, your Saturn will rule two houses, which is Capricorn and Aquarius, which is for you the first house and the second house. <laughs> So therefore, Saturn is the lord of two houses, the first and the second. So similarly, every nakshatra has a lord. So for example, if you have sun in the 10th house, suppose you are a cancer ascendant, right? So for cancer, which sign is in the 10th house? You have Aries. So sun is exalted, he's in Digbal in Aries. Now in Aries, there are three nakshatras. The first nakshatra is Ashwini, then there is Bharani, and then there is Kritika, right? So Ashwini and Bharani are completely there in Aries, and Kritika has only one pada in Aries, right? But now, these three nakshatras are also lauded by some planet, and they are lauded by different planets. So for example, Ashwini is lauded by Ketu, and then Bharani is lauded by Venus, and Kritika is lauded by the sun himself. Now, suppose there is one Cancer Ascendant who has Sun in the 10th house. You will say, oh, it's an exaltation in the Iqbal, blah, blah, blah. You will say all this, right? <clears throat> but suppose this Sun's Nakshatra Lord is Ketu, which means the Sun is, you know, one degree of Ashwini. Now, you need to see where Ketu is. If this Ketu is placed in a Dusana house, then you will hardly see any results. So then what will happen is, superficially there will be some name fame, which means, you know, the person will have some government job, but it like in India, it won't be like UPSC, like IS. It will not be like that. Or, you know, it will be like, yeah, maybe the person is in corporate, you know, he's just known. It's like, it's very superficial. You could not be known at all. Why? Because the Nakshatra Lord is not promising you something. The Nakshatra Lord is almost like three times more important than the planet itself. Because it's like zooming into a particular zodiac sign. But now imagine this Ketu, if Sun is in Ashwini in the 10th house. Imagine Ashwini's ruler Ketu now is in the sign of... <clears throat> Or, you know, whichever sign, but let's assume he's in the 11th house, okay? So, in the 11th house, Ketu will be in Taurus, right? Now, Ketu is debilitated here because Rahu gets exalted in Taurus. But because it is in 12th house, it will still give you a lot of name fame, but it will come without any awareness, which means you will not maybe know how to utilize it. But nonetheless, it will come. 
which means now because the nakshatra lord is in a great dignity so you will get massive name fame so now what is happening is <coughs> planetary wise the 10th house is indicated and nakshatra wise the 11th house is indicated now you can add further layer to this who is the dispositor of the sun the dispositor is the lord of the sign where a planet is placed so sun is in aries right who is the lord of aries we know mars so now where is mars if mars is also in taurus or maybe mars is in the sign of leo why do i say leo because leo is the second house for cancer or mars is in sagittarius why sagittarius because sagittarius is the sixth house so so adding to ketu who is the nakshatra lord and adding to the sun who is the planet if the dispositor of the sun is also in another artha house or in the 11th house so for example in this case for a cancer ascendant sun is in the 10th and mangal is either in leo sagittarius or maybe in aries itself with the sun or even better if it is in taurus in the 11th then there is tremendous name fame and adding to that the cherry on the top what is the cherry on the top you get sun mahadasha in your life that that's the cherry on the top so suppose you get sun mahadasha when you are 25 then you can maybe by the time you are 31 you will be cracking you know civil services you can become an is officer okay for example but now what he will say no no we know you know son is in 10th house the king will award him you know parashara says you know the king will award him with elephants and all this you, you will read all these fancy stuff but you will not see the results but now you will think, hmm, but there are so many people who will have this. Like, you know, if there is a cancer ascendant, sun will be in the 10th, then Ketu will be in the 11th, or Mars is either in 2nd, 6th, 10th, or 11th. But still you will see that uh, they are doing above average, but not like supremely excellent. Why? Because this is just one planet. My dear sir, my dear madam, what about the other eight planets? Where are they? What are they doing in that chart? Are they also speaking in the same tone? So therefore, whenever you are talking of something very good, like excellent, you know, like going into the IIT or IIM or, you know, going to Harvard, Stanford, Oxford, uh, or becoming an IES officer or becoming a politician, among the nine planets, at least I'm saying bare minimum, ideally it should be more, but bare minimum, five to four to five planets, Four is like bare minimum. If four is also not possible, I would say at least five. But bare minimum is four. At least four or five planets should be placed in a way that is related to houses of name fame. Like the first house, second house, sixth house, tenth house, eleventh house. Not only by planetary placement or lordship, but even through nakshatra. So their nakshatra lords also should be in these houses. And their dispositors also should be strong, strong, you know, well, well placed. Or at least their dispositors should be in Kendra. And you should get the Dasha of one of those planets when you are aiming to give your UPSC exam. Otherwise, what happens is, uh, suppose your sun is good, but uh, your Venus Mahadasha is there till, you know, you are 40. So then the age is gone. You cannot appear for UPSC. So then when you are 40, you will suddenly get start getting a lot of name fame till the time you are 46 and your career will just shoot up. Why? Because now your yoga for name fame is activated. And on top of that, if you have some excellent transit, like, you know, Rahu transiting the Lagna or the 11th or the 10th, if you are even luckier, then it will be like the whole world will come to know who you are. Okay. And now you may think, oh, but San Mahadasha is six years. When it will happen? So within sun mahadasha in sun 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 mahadasha sun antaradasha it will not happen you will need at least another one one other planet where which is also indicating name fame so suppose you you have you know uh sun jupiter so suppose jupiter is also somewhere in sagittarius in the sixth house it's indicating name fame and all these other factors are there then when sun jupiter dasha comes then it's like bang you are famous the whole world knows you okay so that is how you will know so the nakshatras and dispositors will change the story and the dashas all right and transits the cherry on the top so 
So therefore, most important among all this is the nakshatras. So don't forget nakshatras. So nakshatras, dispositors, dashas and transit. So and if the dashas are excellent back to back, then there is, you know, some legend is born, you know, like very famous personalities like uh, Amitabh Bachchan or Narendra Modi or you know, Donald Trump, Joe Biden or whoever, you know, like Shah Rukh Khan, very, very, very famous personalities. So because you can't say, oh, I just worked for, you know, six years and that's it. You know, no, you have to work for at least 20, 30 years. You have to maintain that level of name fame. You have to constantly keep delivering and, you know, exceeding others' expectations. Only then you become a legend, right? Otherwise not. So imagine how difficult it is, you know. Difficult in the sense, astrologically, imagine, you know, you have like from the time you are 20 till the time you are 50, at least 30 years, you need excellent back-to-back -back dashas, which is next to impossible. That is why <clears throat> many cricketers or many film stars, you will see, you know, they they get good periods, uh, you know, but suddenly, you know, after four years, five years, they are gone. Or maybe after 10 years, they can't perform anymore, right? Why is that? Because... Their horoscope is very strong, but the good dash, the best dasha has gone. So now the next dashas are either average or not the best. So then they they don't become famous. They can't perform, right? So therefore, we need really very good karma to be extremely famous because it's not a joke to have a strong chart and strong dashas and strong transits. Okay, imagine how many factors have to combine. For a legend to be born how wonderful astrology is and how wonderful is the universe and the creation of god that whenever a legend is born you know all these things it will, it will just come and form together and then at the right time the person will get some opportunity and then he or she will shoot off and then by the time maybe they are 50 or 60 they will become a legend all right thank you so much if you like this video don't forget to hit the thumbs up and show me your comments in the comment section what planner do you have and in which dasha did you get name fame all right please take care and for consultations you will find my website down in the description section thank you so much